I'm Nicole Stecklang, technical agronomist for the Calvin Asgro in Northeast Iowa. We need to talk about corn lodging, corn going down. So there's two major ways that corn is going to lodge. The first one is root lodging. That one is going to happen earlier in the season, typically before we get those brace roots out. You'll get a wind and that corn plant is going to tip over at the soil surface and then grow back up. You'll get that goose necking. This is going to be common when we get wind um, in loose soils, kind of some wet soils, and we don't have those brace roots out quite yet. Another time you're going to see that is when you have severe rootworm feeding, so then you just don't have a very good base under that corn plant, don't have a good anchor, and you're going to see that plant tipping at the soil surface. The next way a corn plant lodges is stalk lodging. So that's when that corn plant is going to kink, usually in between the nodes. So I've recently been getting a lot of pictures like this and like this and like this. Now, some people driving by, it may look like it could possibly be green snap. So we need to differentiate between stock kinking and green snap. So green snap is going to occur on that actual node and it is going to break that plant off or partially break it off at the node. Now we aren't going to typically see a whole lot of green snap at this stage in the corn plant's life just because the tip typically when we get that green snap it's because that plant is growing very rapidly and it snaps. So we don't have a whole lot of green snap happening, you know, as we're getting into this R3, R4 stage as that corn begins to dent. So right now, most of the pictures of lodging and the fields that I've looked at, the lodging is stock lodging. Typically when we think about that, we're seeing it from the combine stuff when we got those late winds and it's happening because that plant has desiccated and as it dies, it starts to rot naturally. And so then it doesn't really have a very strong stock. The other one is if you have levels of stock rot in there, which led to earlier plant death, um, hollowing out of that stock and then really weak stock so it's tipping over. So why is it happening now? So as I visit these fields and as I look at these pictures, um, really three major things come to mind. The first one being moisture, if you've been getting it. The next one is soil texture. Um, and then the third is soil, um, soil test potassium. So really what it's coming down to is, are we getting these plants the amount of nitrogen and especially the amount of potassium that it needs to fill these ears without having to rob it from the stalk. So have we been getting moisture? So these plants are basically like a guy that got in a bar fight, broke his jaw, and now he's sucking everything through a straw. All these plants need to be able to suck nutrients up. If we don't get rain, we can't suck up those nutrients. We have a huge demand for these nutrients right now, particularly potassium and nitrogen. And if they can't get it from the ground, they're going to pull it from the stalk. Another thing that happens with potassium is as we get our soils super dried, you almost need to think about peas in between two slices of bread. As that soil gets really dried out, those, um, those clay layers will collapse and trap that potassium so then it doesn't get into the water that the plant is able to pull up. Even if we do get a small rain, it takes time for that soil to kind of fill back up and release those peas into the soil solution. So how much moisture are we getting? Another question obviously is soil type. If it's sandier soils, it's not going to be holding that many nutrients to begin with. It also dries out faster. So then the ability to suck up those nutrients obviously isn't going to be there. And then the last one is soil test. So if you have lower soil test potassium, obviously you're probably going to run into these problems, these issues earlier than somebody with a lot of potassium. But it could still happen to you if you do have good fertil fertility levels. And that comes mainly back to moisture. Even though it's there, the plant just can't get it. So hopefully you guys are getting catching enough rains where this doesn't become an issue, but know that we might be seeing that particularly in the areas with less rain and areas on different uh, soil types, particularly sand. If you have any questions, call, text, or email.